What? Yeah. Will you film the thing for me? What thing? What we're this doing, tour. the tour. Okay. Oh, you're great. Thank you so much, Diane. Here, let me get closer Stay to you. with me. Oh, <laughs> cool. These ladies are amazing. Yay. We all met at the Herb Festival, Snowbrush <laughs> Herb Festival, last Sunday. Mm -hmm. And these guys, they came out of their booth, and they're just standing there. And all these people were listening and crying. And I just connected with all these amazing people there. I made all these friends. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. And they came down and brought flowers and they brought their beautiful scented soaps and everything. I'm so grateful. Come over here, Matthew. Yeah. If you want to go on the tour, then come with us. Dorothy, come with us. I want you to come and listen to this because this is really different. So what this is, is kitchen garden, okay? The place where you go the most every day, where you grow your summer vegetables and all that, is your kitchen garden. Because you make many trips every day to go get the food, so you want to close this to your house. The edible food forest, you don't go as often. You'll go pick berries, you'll go pick other nuts and, and fruit and all that. You don't go every day. So the kitchen garden is the most important for everyday food. And of course in Utah, it's only in the summer, okay? But what's really neat is last year was the first year. And what we realized is that it's too hot to grow all your plants in here because the hot sun all day just makes everything wilt and it doesn't grow very fast. <laughs> plants, like in Hawaii, they all grow in a forest together. And in other places, like in Austria, they grow all the plants together because that way they protect each other, they insulate each other. We also find out in permaculture that they sustain each other by nitrogen fixing, mineral accumulating, and all these wonderful things. They feed each other, the plants. So what we do is we had horrible grass. I hate it. I hate wasting water on it. So we threw about 12 inches of wood chips. Wood chips and hookah beds with logs are replicating the forest. What the forest does when a tree dies is it becomes a sponge, collects more nutrients, then it builds up what's called fungi. The fungi literally develop and they decompose the tree and they turn it into beautiful nutrients. So you see all these beautiful little plants around the dead tree and everything's growing like crazy all of a sudden. And they're being fed, you see, and they, they're being watered, the moisture's in there. Plus the tree has dropped all its leaf litter, insulated with mulch, the forest floor. And so the water doesn't evaporate, so everything's lush and green inside there. So we want to recreate that. Instead of this desert we live in and the heat, we have to use lots of water and everything. The plants are actually growing better, but until these trees become fully established and they will shade everything, we came up here at the school with what we call crit growing shade. We started with sunflowers and this year we added sun chokes. These are the sun chokes over here. So we're starting to flower now. And they are wonderful trellises for beans and cucumbers and everything to grow up like this. They're so wonderful, but they create all this beautiful shade. Then you'll see how wonderful the tree shade is over here. Now what we realize is because we have it cooler in here and we have moisture, our lettuce doesn't bolt down under here. So we decided, let's try some tropical plants like the Polynesians. We have taro root. Look at this gorgeous oh, wow. taro root. It came back from last year. It literally insulated through the winter and came back and sprouted through all the witches. And I was like, boy, are you a hardy tropical plant. You know, it's amazing what you can grow when you create the right conditions. Mm -hmm. So we've got turmeric over there. We've got taro root here. The turmeric's over there. We've got horseradish. We've got ginger coming back every year. It's amazing the plants you can grow along, of course. You've got your vegetables. You've got your... Um, wow. we got peas, first crop. Then we did lentils. Then we did flax, and now I'm doing another crop of flax. And that's just in the short season of Utah growing. Then we got wow. the tomatoes growing along with it, the beans are growing along with it, the cucumbers are growing along with it, the peppers, and the onions. The onions have flourished in here because it's cool. And so eventually, if you could see inside my tree, little rainforest, I call it inside there, it is like being in Hawaii in a tropical forest. And the grapevine is growing up loaded with grapes, and everything is nice and cool in the middle of the rainforest. It's so wonderful, and the plants love it. This is how nature is meant to grow. No fertilizer needed, no pesticides, no herbicides, very little work. I never till. I just throw a bunch of seeds out every year, whatever I feel like growing out there. And the perennial plants, like the trees and everything else, a lot of these, uh, like this is basil mint, they'll just keep coming back. And you get so much of it, you share it with everybody, because everybody wants this, it smells so good. If you want to make tomato sauce, this will come back every year all that fragile basil doesn't. You gotta grow little plants every year. But this oh, is wonderful. Wow. We try to go more towards perennial. 
with her melodic <laughs> because it keeps coming back and it'll take care of itself. So we've got berry bushes in here. So this is what's called the kitchen garden. Now I'm going to take you what's called the edible forest. We have 57 fruit and nut trees out there. Hazelnut, chestnut, almond, chestnut. We have all these different kind of nut trees and then fruit trees. And then we have what's called the canopy trees. He's one of them because in the forest there's always canopy trees that let filtered light in and that's what we want. And then we have the understory trees which are your fruit trees. Then we have bushes and vines growing under them. And then we have other crops like herbs and other plants. We have asparagus, uh, artichokes, and other ones that keep coming back every year. Okay, these are root crops. Yep, they come back every year. They just keep coming back. It's creating an atmosphere with the logs in the ground that's just like a forest with deep insulation and mulch. And that keeps everything warm. And it creates an ecosystem of life under there that takes care of it. Mm -hmm. Fungus brings up the nutrition. We plant complementary plants that actually feed minerals and feed nitrogen. We specifically pick. And here in Utah, because it is so dry and hot, I'm trying to get a lot of my um, families that come and learn how to plant and design their gills of plants, choose some native drought resistant plants too. Because if we do end up in the worst drought in the world, they'll survive.